So I'm working on this little Astro van that's too tall to fit in my shop. Curses! <laughs> Belongs to somebody that I think is a really good person that I like a lot, so I work on it anyway. So the code that he's getting on this is code 449 and then code 455. One is the vent solenoid malfunction and the other code is uh, uh, evap leak, a gross one. I had a newer customer wake me up this morning at like 7 after I'd been up till midnight, so I'm a little out of it. I didn't cuss her out, but I felt like it. So this is the vent solenoid right here, and the vent solenoid just has two wires. You've got an orange wire, which is battery voltage, and then a white wire, which is ground. Now the way this works is when you blow pressure to it, um, if you run power and ground, it closes off while it has power and ground. As long as it has pressure and the pressure's high, it'll hold it. Um, so anyway, and then when the pressure's low, it'll vent. So I checked the wires on this, and there was no battery voltage at the orange wire. And so I went to check it out, and from the wire diagram, it shows that the power for that comes off of the orange wire up here and that there's a splice, there's a S109 splice uh, up in here and from there I had power and the splice was good and so this band previously, the last time this was a movie star in one of my action films we had a problem with the metal bracket right here chafing through the wire, you can see where I've cleaned these wires up and the customer thought it was the same problem again um, but here, the orange wire, as you see that it's probed, was not one of the ones that received a little uh, worm scab of electrical tape. It was unchafed, unharmed, no problem. Now the trouble with this car is, is that the loom is horrible. I don't know if it's soy based or just super cheap or what. Don't be cheap on your wire harnesses. I don't care what car I don't care how cheap a car company you are. You spend good money on wires because this can really cost your customers a lot of grief and headache. Well, me, and then I'll bill them, and then it will transfer. So anyway, uh, the wire was fine, but I wasn't getting any power here at all. I tested it and uh, with my power probe with the voltmeter, and when I go like this, there's no power. It's just zero, and every now and then I get a little faint uh, ground signal. You see that little green at the top left by power probe? So I get this ground, ground signal. I'm like, what the heck? And so I didn't know quite what it was. And so I went to the vent solenoid, remember back down there underneath on the frame where we just were? I went to that and from there I hooked up power using a speaker wire with alligator clips. It's like a really long set of jumper cables that I use. So with that unplugged, and I know that's supposed to be able to take battery voltage. So I ran battery voltage from that uh, to the battery, and then I probed this, and guess what happened? It ran battery voltage. So from this point here back to the solenoid, I'm good. And from this point, um, up to there something's broken because I have voltage here and then I don't have voltage here but I know that the wire is good from here back so somewhere along here I know that something's bad so I follow the harness and I'm like aha look it's all crumply and something's wrong here so I check at the PCV valve to see or uh, fitting that one's not the valve but to see if there's a problem there and there's not I check a little further up there's not so what are you going to do? You got to go up to the front of the vehicle and then check. So I'm looking at the harness and I know that the orange wire is inside this big fat harness that runs the length of the vehicle and back here. And I know that I've got power here. I know that the splice is good so it's got to be a broken wire somewhere in there. So I pull the wire out here and I tug on the orange one just a little bit to probe it. And as I tug on it, you can see how the harness is laying on uh, the receiver dryer line, on the low pressure line. So apparently this orange wire was at the bottom of that, took the brunt of it, and that's where my brake is. And so that's why I've got the code uh, P0449 vent solenoid problem. It's not getting power, so it's not closing. If it doesn't close, that's going to cause a gross vacuum leak. I thought I was going to be able to use my... Uh, 
smoke machine that I made, who I affectionately named Nellie the Elephant, who popped her trunk and trumpled off through the jungle. Off she ran with the trumpety trump, 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 trump. So anyway, didn't get to use Nellie. Found the problem, it's that wiring issue. So, that being said, I'm gonna have to do something to retain this wire harness so that it's up. I'm gonna have to open it up and see if there are some other wires that are affected. Like I said, the customer thought it was the same problem and I guess the nature of it is, he just knew that the check engine light came on last time and that it ran crappy. So, it's running crappy. I've got a misfire on cylinder number three too. So that might be related to something with this. It might be an injector wire or something for cylinder number three there that uh, is a miss. So we'll check it out and see what the deal is. This van's been a little adventure in wiring diagnosis. This whole thing took me, I think it took me about 45 minutes to find that. So uh, the way that I like to do it is I just like to think of it in sections and I like to do tests if I can in sections and narrow it down that way. It's just like that evap, evap thing that I did on that uh, town and country, same kind of deal. So as I've opened this up a little bit bigger, you can see um, the rest of that wire. See down at the bottom of the frame. It looks like it just really chafed in there over a period of time. But uh, the secondary wire, the runner up for getting uh, hacked was this green wire here, but it didn't affect any of the other wires. I've inspected it pretty thoroughly. What I like to do is I'll take a big fat harness like this, make sure that you strip back the, the shielding far enough to where you can really handle it. But I'll go through and pick out a couple of wires and then a couple more and then a couple more. And I'll just go through it little by little and make it essentially pass through uh, an individualized inspection for each of the wires. Um, because you can have all kinds of things hiding underneath and behind other wires when they're all in a bundle like this. It's difficult to see. So you just got to get kind of manual and tedious with it. But uh, anyway, we found our broken wire and uh, going to correct that, wrap it up, shield it good, and then uh, support it so that this doesn't happen again. Ah, there's gold in them thar hills. So what I've done is I've taken the wire harness and uh, I patched up that orange wire. I did a butt splice on it. Uh, secured it to the rest of the harness really well with electrical tape. I reclosed these and I bent this. This used to go straight down and it used to put it right onto the pipe here. So I bent it back and I also secured it a little further to the right. And the reason why I did what I did is I don't want to harass or manipulate or pull on the rest of this wire harness any more than I have to and thus create other issues as it's falling apart. I mean this thing is a spider web. I mean it's just uh, complex and very fragile at this point. So I've got that all buttoned up. I've got clearance to where I'm not rubbing and uh, should be good to go. Now to put that stupid doghouse back on. Doghouse is the engine cover on the interior of the vehicle. That's mechanic speak. Doghouse. You're welcome. If you like this video, if you want to see more like it, uh, just hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you do like it, click like. It'll help other people to find it too. Thanks. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to see more, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.